three, two, one. Oh my God, that's cold. Wow. You were early again, Ryan. I was a little premature on that one. I didn't know if you would hear it or not. (laughs) Welcome back to You Betcha Radio Podcast. This is the coldest podcast in all the Midwest. We got a great show lined up. We got burger time. We got an interview. We got bush light. Let's just get into the show. Here at You Betcha, we know that life is way too short to hold your own drink, and that's why we have the Bev Buckle. Now, the Bev Buckle is a belt buckle that is the world's first retractable drink holder. And I tell you what, this thing holds your bush lattes like a charm. They are handmade here in the U.S., and these guys were also on Shark Tank, so they are the perfect gift for someone who loves to drink bush lattes, but you know just doesn't want to be bothered with the fact of holding the bush latte. You can find these guys on their social media at BevBuckle or on their website, BevBuckle.com. That's B-E-V-B-U-C-K-L-E.com. And if you want 15% off of your order, use promo code YouBetcha with no space. That's Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A, YouBetcha, promo code 50% off at BevBuckle.com. And I hope that you guys love your Bush Latte holder. I want to talk to you guys about U Motors Motorsports and Marine located in Fargo, North Dakota and Pelican Lake, Minnesota. They have all of the best brands, Honda, Yamaha, Ski-Doo, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, Nautic Boats, Super Boats, Supreme Boats, all of the boats, and even Avalon Pontoons. If you mention this ad, you can get 20% off parts and accessories, and obviously some exclusions may apply, but you can get 20% off parts and accessories. You can check them out on Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, but also at their website, umotorsinc.com. Again, that's umotorsinc.com. I would venture to say it's almost the nectar of the gods. Back, baby, back. I want my push. Oh my God, that's cold. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back to episode three. Four. Episode four. Another fact wrong by Ryan. It's <laughs> I'm just glad you're on top of it. They're starting to add up. <laughs> Episode four of the You Betcha podcast. Remember, you can find us on all social media platforms at the handle at O U Betcha. That's at O H H U Betcha. So it's kind of an exciting time right now. We had to take a quick break from the merch run. I've been slaving away up in the merch's nest, printing t shirts, trying to get them done while Miles is bossing me around. But he did go get me burger time. Yeah. So we last podcast, we my my number one restaurant, fast food restaurant was burger time. Ryan had never have it. So I figured the first time he ever has it, we should do it live on air like we're doing right now. Um, Ryan, dive in, grab your burger. Um, we're going to try not to make it too gross with like the sound effects of our, our mouths eating it. But (laughs) basically we're going to get a live review from Ryan, the the t-shirt guy here. Yeah. No. So I I, I will have to say when I went there to grab this, like it's a little greasy, but that's part of the experience, Ryan. All right. Um, they literally had a garbage can sitting out in, in one of the, uh, (laughs) one of the the drive-thrus. So, um, that was um, pure form. So I'm going to dive in. What do you, what's your initial thoughts on this, well, Ryan? It, it's been sitting for probably like a good 10 minutes. So if it is as good as you preach it to be being like mm. lukewarm, I think we're off to a pretty good start. Mm. All right. Mm. Wow. It looks I like just a, had my first bites. Like a, it tastes delicious. A Whopper imitator. What do you think? Knee jerk reaction. <laughs> Sorry about the chewing noises, ma'am. That reminds me of a Burger King Whopper, but not, not even in the same class. Not even the same class, but remember, it's lukewarm. I would give it a. It's warm, yeah. I would give it an eight and a half out of ten. There you go, folks. So I'm not wrong. He did it live yeah, it's, here. It's it's heavy on grease. You know, it, it, once you unwrap it, 
like your your whole your whole hand is going to get greasy. But I feel like that's just part of the burger time experience. Um, now the fries, in the same sense, are like not warm anymore. But imagine uh, if they're warm, Ryan. These huh, we got a bur- uh, burger imitation Burger King Whopper, but better. And we kind of have like imitation McDonald's fries. That's not a lie. I said that. I said they probably get their their potatoes from the same place. So there you go. On air, burger time review by Ryan, and he gave an eight out of five, eight point five out of ten. Yeah, I mean, look at how fat. Look at how fat that double. That double. Yeah, I gave I gave him a double burgers. even too. So look at that. If he's going to be burning all that energy printing shirts up upstairs, I got to feed him correctly. Even though he's kind of got a sweatshop feel going up there. That would be, this is proper nutrition in the You Betcha Bunker. (laughs) Yeah, this is, you got to throw out all your diet plans when you're in the bunker. It's just a shop. Heavy on carbs. Guys being dudes, printing shirts, hanging out. Ball busting. Oh, there has been some ball busting going on, actually. Ball busting, t-shirt, hustling, you bet your bunker. Are you trying to do your best Ric Flair impression <laughs> yeah. there, Ryan? <laughs> okay, I'll take a break from eating. You keep eating, Ryan. So we promised that we'd do a Burger Time Live, which we just did. Um, on the last cast, we talked about our top three restaurants. It seemed to be that... Most people were on it with Taco John's. Okay. Um, they they like Taco John's. Um, the people who knew Burger Time said it was a great choice. I did catch a little flack for hating on Chipotle, which I kind of knew I would. But again, they kind of came from the millennial hipster people. So yeah. um, whatever. Um, but, but all in all, uh, you know... I think people kind of agreed with what we had, so that was good. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty impressed. I I hope that more people can experience burger time aside from your average McDonald's or Burger King. Um, it's worth it's worth driving for. And I think I'm gonna post a photo of the garbage can so you guys know that I'm not lying about it. That's like that's one of their things. Like, let's close down a drive through, so we'll throw. And was it completely full? Was the garbage can like like heaping full? I feel I, like that, that I, would also be maybe. I mean, you think it would blow over in this in this wind that we've been having. But if I was in charge of Burger Time merch, I would literally make a shirt with a picture of like the trash can, and that was it. And it just said Burger Time on the top. Mm-hmm. Like that should be their like unofficial logo as the trash can. Well, it's a huge miss that they're not already doing that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if I get really rich, I want to buy Burger Times. I want to rebrand them and make them billions and billions of dollars. So, yeah, it's similar to the Gary Vee approach of like, I'm gonna buy the Jets, but you're gonna buy Burger Time. Yeah, but a would lot- you rebrand it? Burger Time? Yeah, and I mean, you bet your burgers. No, I would keep it Burger Time. Okay, I gotta diversify my portfolio. I can't have everything under you betcha. I think. <laughs> So, great segue, Ryan, into uh, You Betcha Palooza. Guys, You Betcha <laughs> Palooza is in a few weeks. Um, it's fine. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm realizing that it is only a couple weeks away, and everyone around me is really giving me the vibes on that this is going to turn into Fire Festival. Um, but I promise you, I'm doing everything I can to not make it Fire Festival. Maybe I should start promising ridiculous things and then not fall through and then uh, actually just not hold the festival at all. And then we have a fire festival situation on our hands. So then there's just a bunch of people standing on the ice (laughs) wondering where all the bush lights at. Yeah. They're literally just a bunch of people dressed for an entire day of drinking, but instead they're literally just standing there and miles, you bet you guys know where to be found, but there might be (laughs) tents out there. Tents. Yeah, the ice bar, there there will be a big tent by the ice bar. Yeah. So um, I promise it's not going to be Fire Festival 2019. Um, remember to go sign up your cornhole team. We still have slots left. Um, you win $500. I don't know. What would you do with their $500 winning, Ryan? You can stop eating for like five Man, I, seconds. This is, this is super Ryan. rude, but this is how good it is. <laughs> 
fucked up. This entire first opening uh, segment of this podcast is a failure because Ryan's just been eating the entire single <laughs> entire time, <laughs> and now he's got grease all over the mic. It's all over, man. There's no winning in this. What would you do with your 500 bucks? I think I would bring me and the You Betcha crew out to a nice dinner um, just for putting on such a good festival, for keeping right. their word and, ma- and making it not the next fire festival. I don't think because, your, I don't think your fiance is gonna like that very much. You guys have a mortgage now to pay. Well, just Ryan. think about it. Like I, I'll spend <laughs> two fifty on a nice dinner, and then I have another two fifty to to put towards her. Well, I was saying you got a mortgage, so <laughs> you got to pay the bills, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Mortgage is a little bit different than rent. I mean, yeah, like that's in your name. It's kind of like real world. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the real world, <laughs> Ryan. Um, I know that I what I would do with my five hundred dollars that I could win. Um, is I probably would just at the after party just buy everyone five hundred dollars worth of bush light. I mean, I think that's like what the whole day's about, and for people to just have a get good free time. bush light thrown at them. You get a free bush light if you uh, if you sign up for the cornhole tournament. You get a free drink ticket. So another another reason to get into that. So what we got coming up next is. An interview with a guy who he literally owns a company that makes professional cornhole bags. Now, before I met this guy, I didn't really realize that that was like a market that you could do and, and sell. Yeah. Um, but his bags are used by like professional cornhole players. He sponsors teams. They're on ESPN. Um, but what I love most about him is he's literally just like your regular guy. You you go hang out with that at your small town bar drink some bush lattes with, maybe go hunting, whatever. Um, his name's Chris Meek, local bag companies. Bush burp. I think that was a burger First time burp. Oh, it could have been. Um, so, yeah, we uh, we sat and chatted with him. And so here's the interview with Chris Meek from local bag company. It's ice fishing season again, and the only thing colder than the ice below your feet is the bushel in your ice house. And what better way to consume those bushels than with the ultimate bush consumption device, the deer bong. The deer bong is an antler-shaped beer bong that holds 16 ounces of your favorite beverage. You can get 10% off at thedeerbong.com using code FROZEN, F-R-O-Z-E-N, at thedeerbong.com. Again, that is code FROZEN for 10% off at thedeerbong.com. All right, I'd like to welcome on a buddy of mine out in Ohio. Um, His name is Chris Meek, and he is the owner of a cornhole bag-making company called Local Bag Company. Chris, how are you doing? Doing excellent, man. I appreciate you having me on. I'm a fellow Bush Light drinker, and and, uh, I think you might be the the unelected president of all of us uh, bush light drinks. <laughs> well, that is very flattering, but um, yeah. So I would love for you to just kind of share with, with us a little bit of your story and background of what company you have um, and really how you got into making professional uh, cornhole bags. Cause I don't think a lot of people necessarily know that's even a job or that that's really even something that you can get into. So just kind of give us a little bit of a background and, and how you ended up, you know, getting your bags on ESPN. Yeah, I, I've just played for a long time. Uh, cornhole was, has been big in the house since about 2005, 2006. There's been a few leagues that have come and gone. And, uh, here recently, uh, about three years ago, uh, they, they started showing cornhole on ESPN and, uh, I've played for a long time, know a lot of great players, and I just kind of looked at it and saw an opportunity to uh, take a, a small risk and uh, make some bags. And I, I really didn't didn't expect to grow this quickly. It's it's really an honor to see him on TV and see him all across the nation, being uh, uh, only a year old business wise. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you have like a story where you remember that's like? You're, you're making bags and all of a sudden you're like, this can maybe be a, like a full-time gig or, or a full-time business. Do you remember a moment like that? You know, I, I always wanted it to be, uh, that that was always my goal. I never thought I could, I could reach this, uh, this level this quickly. I, I was, I'm just fortunate. I had the, I got the bags and some of the top players in the nation's hands and they, 
they they won some big tournaments with them and uh, got some national exposure. And uh, here I am working twice as hard, but uh, doing it all for myself here. Yeah, that's um, I was talking to you the other day and, and we said that some people give up the 40 hour work week um, to, uh, gain an 80 hour work week for working for themselves. So, <laughs> yep. yeah, um, I definitely know that. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, like it's crazy that cornhole is now like a sport on ESPN. Um, just talk about a little bit, the cornhole culture that from where it kind of started to where it is now. And, you know, you obviously got some really, right. really good players that, that are on ESPN and, and stuff like that. So just talk a little bit about like the cornhole culture and kind of even how it will translate well into just Midwest culture in general. Right. You know, it's, it's a really unique sport. Uh, um, lots of people kind of draw the comparison to poker where, you know, everybody plays poker. Some people are better than others and, and you can actually play against, you know, a pro player, um, you know, and back in, you know, 2004, five and six, there are people playing at campgrounds and at the county fairs. And if you went and won a county fair tournament, you know, that was big. And then they started having regional and national tournaments. And, uh, you know, being on TV has always been the goal for, man, 15 years probably. And yeah. it just kind of, it just finally came to fruition about three or four years ago. And uh, it, it's gaining a lot of traction because it really is a sport where, Anybody can play and anybody can win. Um, you know, there's there's probably some guy practicing in his barn right now. You know, saw it on TV this weekend and and and, and really wants to get after it. And in, in fact, in the nationals, which are in Fort Lauderdale uh, this this weekend, you know, there were some new faces that came in and, and shook things up. Uh, it's just a game where everybody has the camaraderie. Like you know, whether you're playing in your backyard or you're playing on a national stage everybody shares the love of the game. You know, a doctor can be playing uh, against the guy that, that, that changes oil. Now, both of those are important jobs, but those are two very different people. But if they're throwing bags, man, everybody's on the same level. You can have an old Ford pickup parked next to a Corvette and, and we're playing, we're playing cornhole. Nobody cares what everybody's driving. <laughs> yeah. I like that actually. Um, so tell me a little bit about like, cause obviously there's a lot of strategy just like in any game that there's a professional level, like just talk about like some of the strategy that some of these like big time players will, you know, take into account while they're playing the game. Cause there's probably a lot of people at home that just go, I just throw it and try and make it in the hole, you know? <laughs> and obviously it's not as simple as that, but. Yeah, there's a, you know, just like in any sport, um, everybody kind of has their, has their own game plan. Um, I would really compare it to chess, believe it or not, because there are players that try to blow through everybody and, and throw every bag in the hole. And don't get me wrong. You know, if you can throw every bag in the hole, you're going to win, but you're going to come up against the guy that's going to, you know, set blocks and change, change the momentum, you know, slow the game down, speed the game up. Uh, Basically, you know, if you're taking a, like, you know, like a shot in basketball, if you have a hand in your face, it's harder to hit the, you know, hit that yeah. shot. And yeah. Instead of a face, we have a bag in front of the hole. And uh, there are guys, it's called an airmail. They can shoot it, you know, don't even, they won't even touch the board. They'll shoot it, go right in. But if you set a good block and you're halfway in the hole, then the guy's got to push. And that's, that's where, you know, of course there's skill, but, uh, you know, there's also a small chance if you hit the bag you know, the wrong way, even if you're, you're pretty true with the throw, it'll bounce off to the side and then boom, the guy's got you. He's going to throw four in. They're going to have three and it'll be 10 on 12 and it'll be two points. It's actually amazing. Cause you know, I'd say probably in, in a pro game over, I'd say easily 90% of the bags are, are in the hole. I mean, guys are throwing tens and twelves all day long. That's so uh, crazy. <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes you have two guys that have a similar, strategy and and we uh we uh we call them hookers up here they just they just you know they're throwing strikes and and then one guy will miss and they'll go but there's a lot of guys that kind of play chess and uh you know get in the way and mess the board up yeah a little more methodical approach than the flashy make it in the hole approach is right. kind of what you're saying now you know there, there's the the uh 
younger generation, all they do is throw it in a hole and they play fast. And then you get an old guy, I mean, you know, uh, that will slow the game down and, and make that young guy, you know, think about his next shot, put one in front of the hole and, you know, Kinda, it's, it's crazy. It's, it, it's all momentum. It kind of sounds like today's NBA where everyone just wants to shoot deep threes and then you get an old guy who likes doing layups in the post. Oh, like a Bill Lambeer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> For sure. So um, you local bag company is your business and you guys are actually going to sponsor the You Betcha Palooza, uh, which we're going to obviously have our first cornhole tournament and uh, you're going to make some custom... Oh. Right, and it's going to be on a frozen lake. It's got to be the biggest cornhole tournament ever on a frozen lake. I mean, you got to get that in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can like figure out if that's true or not, but it sounds good, so I'm going to probably just roll with that. <laughs> um, yeah, so so the biggest cornhole tournament on ice. You're gonna you're gonna you're one of the sponsors. You're gonna make some custom bags for us, which are going to be awesome. Um, yeah, what do you think about doing this on ice? Is it going to be just an absolute mess, or you think it's going to be okay? You know, I think if everybody has a couple couple bush lights and uh, that's kind of get the, the uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the plan. Uh, the flow going, I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be cold, but I mean, it's going to be flat, right? I mean, the boards are going to be flat. You got that going for you. Yeah, it's. Uh, but I, I I have absolutely no experience with it, so I'm excited to see how it goes down. Yeah, I uh, again, I have absolutely no experience as well, so this is going to be a. Uh, I, I keep joking uh, about, I don't know if you've seen the, the D- Netflix documentary lately about Fire Festival, but I really don't want this to turn into Fire Festival. Where it turns I watched into- that the other day and I thought of you. <laughs> <festival>. <laughs> That's what everyone keeps saying to me. I'm like, I promise I'm not Billy McFarland. <laughs> that guy, I'll tell you what, man, he, he was, he was slinging some ham and, and it wasn't even ham sandwiches, it was cheese sandwiches, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Well, if we can call it that, it was more just like bread and cheese sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw that documentary and I seriously thought about you guys, but you know, you're, I, uh, you're not doing it on an island, so you'll be all right. Yeah. And I'm not promising that Kendall Jenner is going to be there or anything. So, um, you never, Hey, she might, man, this is going to be a big thing. I think. That is true. It's, it's not been confirmed that she's going to come, but it's also not been like confirmed. She's not going to come. So it's right. still up in the air. Right. So just think about that. So, so what's kind of funny is, um, when we were planning this event and I was figuring out, you know, how we we're going to put on this coronal tournament stuff, I, I said, I'm going to call my cornhole guy. And and I think everyone needs to have a cornhole guy. And uh, Chris, you are my cornhole guy, just so you know. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so I know that cornhole is an interesting game. Do you have like a crazy cornhole story of, of one time that something ridiculous happened or you were maybe had way too many bush lattes and you somehow pulled off a ridiculous win or anything of sorts. You know, man, there's been a lot of wins and a lot of losses, but you know, I've got a, a son that just started playing. He's 10 and he, he gets to, he comes to tournaments with us. And, uh, it's funny. We have, we have a, I'm going to, I'm in a really small area, but per capita, it's a very talented area for the game. We have the number one player in the nation actually plays in my barn. And, uh, uh, what we say is what happens on the corn trip stays on the cornhole trip. So, you know, I can't really go into a lot of details, <laughs> but uh, we have a great time. So many good people together. And there's, you know, it's a game where anybody can beat anybody. So the huge upsets we always talk about, um, you know, it, it really is. It's kind of a mixture like camping and, and NASCAR and, and, a, and a game of chess, if that makes any sense. No, oh, absolutely. So I, I don't think people realize that cornhole uh, trips can get that crazy that they can't even, it can't even be put out on the internet. So I kind of like that. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's just part of the community because you got, you know, you got some pretty high, some, some doctors out there, some guys <laughs> that got to look after their reputation. You know, I'm not saying we get that crazy, but what I mean, it's, it's, it's an absolute blast. It brings, you know, I, I love to play uh, and, and I, I love to win. But man, the atmosphere and going to see your friends who now I have friends from all over the nation, literally. Uh, And, you know, 
flying into somewhere and, and seeing all your buddies, you know, at a random bar in the middle of nowhere, you know, cracking open some bush lights from Green Bay, Wisconsin to, to California down to Florida. You oh. know, we're, we're, we're going to be in Connecticut, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, and once that happens, all bets are off, right? Oh, you know, you, <laughs> you know, you know, what's funny is, uh, we always say that we drink bushels and, 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 and we play bags. Bushels and, we, and bags. Uh, I should make a shirt that says that. Uh, we we drink bushels and we throw bla- throw bags, play bags, chew corn. We love it, man. And uh, it really is an honor just to be able to make bags and see my stuff, you know, all, all over the nation now. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. I, I'm 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 sure it's kind of the similar thing with you because you, you you have a huge following down here, uh, and people can really relate to you and. <laughs> You know, that's, that's kind of similar with cornhole. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I got like two more questions for you. One's quick. And one is if someone who does never bought bags before, or someone who doesn't know much about cornhole, but maybe wants to get into it a little bit, what should they look for when they're either buying boards or buying bags or, or anything in general? Like what, you know, what makes a good bag or what makes a good board? Um, Cause you're kind of the expert there are really two markets out there. You, you have the tailgate market, which you see the, you know, the plexiglass boards and the, and the bags with actual corn in them with, you know, duck cloth cans, you know, th- shooting them, you know, they're, 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 we call it shooting, which is throwing, you know, throwing, uh, uh, you know, in the, at the, at the Bengals game. And then there's, there's, there's pro quality stuff, which, you know, the, the materials are better. The bags are filled with a plastic red, and the bags have actually turned into like kind of like golf clubs. You have fast bags, slow bags, in between bags. Bags are a little bigger. Bags are a little smaller. And uh, so many different types uh, that you can kind of tailor uh, your game and, and use the correct bag. Depending on who you're playing or the conditions that you're playing in. If it gets humid, everything slows down. If it gets hot, everything speeds up. So if you have some you know, to, to work with that. Um, but, but really, you know, some bags and a set of boards, you're playing the game. Yeah. You're, that, you're bound to have that's a good really time. What's important. It doesn't matter how awesome your equipment is. You, you know, if you want to get serious, which a lot of people do, and then, you know, you, you trade in your, your Kmart golf clubs and you go to, exporting goods and buy the ones that are 300 and then you then by the time you're done you're done playing you got some five thousand dollar golf clubs you know yeah how it goes. yeah exactly what you cut out a little bit when you said what's inside a, a professional bag what did you say was inside of them it's, it's a it's a plastic resin there's like little pelletized uh pieces of plastic gotcha about the size of a bb a little bigger than a bb nice cool well, that is some info. I mean, the fact that you had to change your game up if it's humid out or if it's drier out is absolutely wild to me. Um, we uh, So on this podcast, I've been kind of ending the uh, interviews with a, with a question about if you could drink Bush Light with one person on earth, who would it be? Wow, man. You, you never warned me about that. I know. I want you to, to think on your feet here. Like a, like like a real person or, or 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 a fictional character on TV or something. Yeah, What's maybe fun? maybe even on TV. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, let's throw that in there too. I would. I, I'd, I'd probably say Burt Reynolds' character, Smokey the Bandit. <laughs> okay. You know, even though he was doing the Coors Light thing, but uh, you know, Burt Burt just recently died, and uh, you know, growing up as a kid in the Midwest and. You know, you know, either that or, or Bo and Luke Duke, one of those two guys. I don't know. I got something with cars. There you go. Yeah, I like that. All right, Chris. Well, where can everyone find a uh, local bag company? You can uh, you can find us on Facebook under, under Local Bags, or you can go to our website, localbagcompany.com. Uh, we have a lot of content on our Facebook page. We we feature the top level level players to the guys just starting in their garage. We, we kind of keep it a community on Facebook there and kind of feature everybody. Nice. Awesome. Well, this, this has been an interview with uh, Chris Meek owner of local bag company. Uh, 
a You Betcha Palooza sponsor, bag sponsor, um, this year in February. So, Chris, thanks for coming on, man. I uh, I look forward to seeing the bags that you do up. I'm excited. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm back. I just want to apologize really quickly, um, not only to you guys, but to Miles. I, I wasn't... You were so absent. Yeah, I didn't contribute a whole lot to that first segment. Um, I was really invested into that burger time. And now we're both bogged down. This isn't, and this isn't like a, a burger time plug, but that was really good. That yeah, was, it was exactly for. as advertised. I think um, I'm really bogged down. It's going to be an absolute Michael Jordan flu game performance here by me to finish out this podcast on this full belly. Um, but I mean, that's just what we do. I just, when the pressure's on, you just got to perform Ryan. So um but don't be surprised if Ryan like can't make it through or anything like that. But I have to step out for a bit. Yeah, take a quick nap. On the couch. <laughs> go go nap quick and fiber. dream about t-shirts on the couch. T-shirts and burger time, man. So that was our interview with Chris. Um, right, he's just like a he's just like a every other Midwest dude. Um, cornhole though, like to have your job be that you just make cornhole bags like there's probably a lot of people out there like that's the dream yeah i I know a few people who do they make they make cornhole boards obviously they don't have a business out of it like like to chris's level but they'll make custom bag bags boards they'll be like right on the main road at the lake with like a sign out front that says a hundred dollars per set and they'll have like yeah, um, I've seen that. some sports team around it or something like that, which <coughs> is cool to have at the lake because normally they play to the culture and like whatever that, university is in the area. Is that where you play bags most is at the lake? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Only, at, uh, only at the lake. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I play it anywhere else and it's kind of like, there's like, I've been to like some random bars that have I mean, yeah. cornhole sets set up. Right. Like, yeah. Bars in the evening or like. Backyard barbecues, you might break out the bags board, but a lot of the time in the summer, the bags so, board is at the lake already. Have you ever played like three or four or five or six games in a row with some yeah, people? Yeah, because winners always stay. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> you hear that, guys? I think I think Ryan should enter into the uh, ice hole tournament and see if that holds up, Ryan. I can. I'll be printing t-shirts and back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so where I was going with that is... Every time I play like a bunch of games in a row, and it happens to me when I'm bowling as well, um, I'm a left-handed <laughs> thrower, and so my plant leg is my right leg. My right butt cheek is so <laughs> sore and hurts so bad for like the next three days after I throw like a bunch of bags in yeah. one day. Um, it's terrible. Well, it's kind of like a punter's plant foot, like... Yeah, the, or, or like, like if I go bowling, like because you only go bowling like once a year, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but then you always yeah. go way too hard, and then yep. you like hurt your your wrist is like absolutely throbbing. Yeah, and your butt, your plant butt cheek hurts. Yeah, every single time. Now it's a seri- uh, This is a serious sport. It is, it is like I'm, high injury and high uh, risk out there. Yeah, I mean Chris has developed a full business around it, around the bags board culture in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, well, the, it's cornhole. Cor- so what do I call it. So up where we're at, there's a lot of people who call it bags more now. Bags. Um, but if you are in the professional cornhole league, it is cornhole through and through. And and we're playing ice hole at you betcha Palooza. Yeah. So putting a little twist on it. Now, my question for you is: Are you a knuckleball bag thrower, or so, are you like a are you like a one of, one of these yeah. guys? So. What I do is I lay the bag flat on my hand. I fluff it a little bit. Like this? I do a little <laughs> fluff action with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh. Uh. And then I spin it a couple of times, uh, kind of like a pitcher would. Or like behind a, his back. shooting a free throw. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got a little routine. I spin it a little <clears> bit. <throat> and then, yes, I keep, when I throw it, I almost throw it like a Frisbee. Interesting. I'm a frisbee guy. I don't know if that's like super amateur or anything. And if yeah. like Chris is listening to this, is like, wow, this guy is such an idiot. He uses the frisbee. Yep. Because I've seen a couple other. I've seen the knuckleball. Yep. I think those people are absolutely ludicrous. I'm a knuckleballer. You, you never know where the thing's gonna bounce. Well, you, that's the thing. Oh, you're it, saying? Have you seen the person who like crumples it no, into no, a that's ball? That's not me. I, oh, I, yeah. I go flat, flat on my hand, and, and then knuckle it straight up. 
Um, the, the nice thing about can that is... Can we talk a little bit about the people who crump it up into a ball? Do, are they even worth talking Those about? Those are like spotted cow people. <laughs> <laughs> Those people... Yes. They're probably, uh, they're probably from like Florida or like... Washington yeah. or something like not the Midwest. They're 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 trying to play the role is what they're doing. Well, they're I not think, playing the splat. I also they're think, playing the role. I think that those people are like doing it for attention too. Probably they're kind of attention people. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you crumple <laughs> your cornhole bag up and then toss it, like you just need to stop listening to this. We don't we don't need you here. So, um, but not really. But <laughs> so back to what you were saying about how you throw it. Your knuckler. Yep. Flat knuckleball. Um, it might get like a 180 revolution on it by the time it hits the board. But if I get if I get the right cadence down, it's gonna I, I know where it's gonna land because it's just gonna land flat. It's gonna splat. Right yeah. Are you a go right for the hole? Are you fo- a blocker or are you a <laughs> land and slide, Kai? Um normally a land and slide. I am as well. Yeah. That's why I put spin on it. Cause then it spins right in there, um, every single time. It's a you. I'll throw a hundred bags. I'll make a hundred bags. I'd like to see that out on the ice. <laughs> that should be like a, a Facebook Live video. How many bags I can make out of a hundred? Um, Just chop it up. Chop it. A hundred different takes. Yeah. You make every single one. That one was warm up. Just give me a second. <laughs> My my bags are a little different than these. You do <laughs> my bags get, have sand in them, sand in them, and not corn. Yeah, you do get a. Uh, are you a sand guy? Well, after you bet Chapalooza, I'm going to be a synthetic rubber or whatever Chris said is. Sure, bags are made out of. So. Yeah, so this is the real deal coming to you bet Chapalooza. Like we're not messing around with bags breaking open, dumping sand onto the ice, the corn getting rotten because precipitation's soaking up inside the bags. Is that a real thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. The cornhole rot over over the over the winter time. You know a lot more about cornhole than I thought you did, Ryan. I'm telling you, man. Winter stay on the so board. It, <laughs> so Ryan knows a lot about cornhole and t-shirts, and that's about it. Um, I feel yeah. like it's got me to a good point in life, though. Now I will have to say, in the I, one of the best cornhole throwers I've ever seen, he he did backspin. Have you ever seen that? No. He threw it, and it literally would just hit the back <laughs> rim of the hole and just spin back in like every single time. So it didn't matter if you tried to block the hole, it would just go right over that, hit the back and just fall in. It was unbelievable. So I feel like, I feel like that situation is like, like a, a, like a, like a Rick Barry free throw situation where he shot them all granny style in the NBA. I feel like that's, that's what that is. But, and he's just mastered it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, no one's doing that for real. But um, that's interesting, man. So many different techniques. Well, and I like you also like, I think when you're doing doubles, because you know, like your teammate, mm-hmm. like the teammate matters too, like the camaraderie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is wild. Um, are you a guy who gets better as he's drinking or what? Yeah, I get better up to a certain point. Same with pool. Like, I'll get better up to like four or five beers and then. I kind of just there's have a to falling off. <laughs> there's a definitely oh a falling my God. off. So like, I have such a bad falling off. Point. I need to get as many games as, in as I can in that yep. span of time. Otherwise, and, then, and like as you're opening and you're like, "Push, this is I'm done for after this one." <laughs> you know, and you know it too. You know the tipping point. Um, yeah, when the bags don't even start, don't even hit the board, or or you you uh, land on your plant <clears throat> leg, and next thing you know, you're you know, like six feet to the right. Yeah. Or you just can't remember the score anymore. <laughs> yeah. I I, don't, I think you're up a couple. That's <laughs> usually how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to, uh, I wonder if there's going to be any like really, really good players at this. Yeah. $500 cash prize. If like, you were really good, like wouldn't you just wouldn't come, you come clean out? up? Yeah. Clean house. Drink some bush lights. You get Bush uh, prize package, which I I've never I haven't seen them yet. Have you seen them? Yeah, they're they're coming in this week. So hopefully I'll get my hands on them and we'll we'll take some photos and yeah. post them. And so be looking for that. Um, yeah, I'm. It's gonna be fun. I uh, 
I can't wait for you, Betcha Palooza, man. I know I keep talking about it a lot, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, two and a half weeks away. Three. <laughs> You're a bastard, Ryan. Oh my God, that's cool, man! Wow. Now you're just Those doing outside. It on, now you're just doing it on purpose. No, I swear. Because you know when you get your finger <sighs> underneath the tab, and you you don't want to lose your spot there. Well, Sometimes it just well a seasoned just, bush light drinker would just wouldn't have that happen to them. Well, that's why I hang around you so I can fit in with with the crowd. Well, basically, I am Mr. Miyagi, and you are the Karate Kid in this situation. The young grass wax on, wax off. The whole shebang. Now, as the bush light, <clears throat> Mr. Miyagi, to your karate kid, Ryan, I'm about to school you up on something. Let's hear it. So there is a website on the internet. So I get messages like all day, every day of people saying, hey, I'm in this location and I can't find any bush light. I've I can't find any bush light. I've seen him. There's a lot. And they're like, what do I do? So I finally have something. For everyone who cannot find bush light in their location. You ready, Ryan? Your mind's about to be blown. It's a website, www.worldwideweb.bush.com. How many H's in bush? Just one. Okay. Yeah, they didn't go for it on that. www.bush.com slash find underscore bush. It literally... Is a oh, push burp. You'll have to plug that in the caption too, just so people can. Yeah, I'll, I'll <clears> this. <throat> I'll probably cut this up and and let the people know. Yeah, push burp again. So, um, I've never seen this before. I'm looking at your screen. So I want you to tell me a city in the United States. Fort Lauderdale. Okay, Florida. Um, I okay. Got to go by zip code. Um, I'm just going to uh, do 67089. That's not a zip code. Um, <laughs> um, Chicago zip code. We're going to find one in Chicago. <laughs> 60603. That's what we're going with. The six. This is really bad radio. 60607. Boom. Do you see all those red... Wow. Oh, hey, you're uh, in Greek town here in Chicago. Well, if you go to Walgreens on 111 South Halsted Street, Illinois, you will find bush light at that Walgreens. Wow. Boom, mic drop, your <coughs> mind is blown. Bush.com slash fine underscore bush, and all your problems are solved. Now, is that is that 3-2 beer? Like Minnesota Walgreens. Um, I don't know if it or... says or not, but I have no idea. So that well, regardless, I mean, like three two bears still fine. Yeah, because I mean, if you need bush, you need bush. You're gonna yeah, it, it's it, it'll get the job done, you know. So I feel like it's a huge miss on Bush's part. Like, why have you've never seen this until you just found it this week? Correct. This yeah. No, I've been using this for a while. I'm I'm seasoned. <laughs> You're holding out on the people. Uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I can't reveal all my secrets right okay. away, Ryan. Okay, that's fair. Well, I've followed the Bush page for a while, and I've never seen this. What's I've never hilarious? seen marketing. I've never seen... What's hilarious about this website is you can choose which type of Bush you're looking for, and one of the options is Bush non-alcoholic. Um, so I don't know who is desperate enough to, like... Wow, and you can I see need, the locations just shrink. Yeah, I mean, the, it's harder <laughs> the to find Chicago Bush area. and A. Um, but for alcoholic friends who are trying to turn their life around, they're they're trying not to drink, um, it does have Bush non-alcoholic on the Bush finder. So there you go. That's a win. Yeah. Yeah. Catering I, to, to all people. I wonder how many people are going to not know this and message and be like, this is an absolute lifesaver. Yeah, I had no clue. Um, but yeah, so that's my Mr. Miyagi. Hey, you should type in uh, like <laughs> Battle Lake, Minnesota. No, type in Detroit Lakes, because like, what if people want to? Here we go. Come this to this is a great job, Ryan. Because Detroit you betcha, Palooza is on Detroit Lakes. So like, where can the people get Bush Lake closest right. to the ice bar? F- 
five six five zero two. Wow. You can't, you, here we go. Bush light. Oh, we were Bush NA. That's yeah, we were Bush NA. No Ryan was so worried. I was like, what? Find Bush. All right, let's just start naming off places. Okay. One, you can get it at the Casey's General Store on Highway 10 right on Detroit Lake. I think that might be 3-2 beer though, just FYI. Probably. You can get it at the Holiday Station. Okay. Probably. Um, you can get, ooh, Lake's Liquor. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where you want to go. That's probably the spot where you're going to, People are going to come into town on You Betcha Palooza. Here we are. We're talking about You Betcha Palooza again. Yeah, we're talking about a potential Lakes sponsor. Liquor. Lakes Liquor. Um, and if anyone from Lakes Liquor is listening to this, let's sponsor up. Let's get you at the actual You Betcha Palooza. Um, but you can get Bush Light at that location. You can also get it at County 6 Gas and Bait. So if you need to pick up some bait, you need to get some gas, and you need to get some Bush Light. You're gonna to want to head to County Six. I like that. Yeah, it's it sounds like like kind of like a mom and pop shop. There's also one good that if big, you're coming from the south, it's called Seven Sister Spirits. Seven Sister Spirits. It's a lot of S's. You can get bush like yeah. there. So this is like, I honestly kind of want to just like, literally just. Um, you should maybe like post a to, photo of that. Go to go to weird. Uh, Weird locations on the on Earth and see if it's if they have bush light there. Yeah, like the back country of like when some... like the first time you ever discovered Google Earth, you ever did oh, that? Oh yeah. And like you would go to like you go ch- first first you do all like the the shoe in ones, yeah. right? So you'd go and you'd like go look at the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And then you go to the Statue of Liberty, and then you go look at the pyramids, and then you go find your house. Yeah. Oh oh yeah. Hey, that, all the time. Hey, that's my backyard. <laughs> Hey, my dad's <laughs> truck is sitting outside. <laughs> it's literally, but you know what the coolest thing is? Is when you see that that Google car driving around and all the cameras. I just want to run to that next thing. to it and just wave at it the whole time. That's crazy. I mean, just like, I wonder what that guy listens to. Guy or gal listens to all day he, in the car. He probably listens to you bet your radio podcast. <laughs> it's it's great driving content. It is. So, but but then like if you're on Google Earth to, to go back to that. You do all the generic. You go look at your house. Maybe go look at your school because yeah. you're doing this in like middle school. Yeah. Um, and then you go just start doing weird stuff, right? You're like, all right, I'm going to go uh, in the middle of the desert. And I'm going to see if I can just like see someone walking or, you know, like <laughs> you go out in the middle see of the woods. A pack of camels. Have you, how about the people who see like someone burying a dead body? I like, was literally just going to say that. There's there's this photo going around the internet. It's like I mean, it's, type it's in, pretty old. Yeah, yeah. Type in this latitude longitude, and you will find someone murdering someone else in cold blood. They they have to have like eliminated those off of Google Earth by now, right? Yeah, I mean, you think so? Is Google Earth just now Google Maps? Do we ever? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I remember you had to like download a separate thing so you yeah. could look at Google Earth and yeah, all that stuff. Ryan is really snot getting his snot into the mic right the now. The Flemmy, like the the bush lights make it. No, it's probably the burger time, honestly. <clears throat> so we really got off on a tangent there about Google Earth, but it just brings me back to when I had the the computer with the big back, um, and uh, just plugging away, figuring out the internet. Um, it was wild when I first joined Facebook, I literally had to lie and I was in middle school and lie and say, I went to my high school cause you had to like be attached to a school. Yeah. Yep. started in college. Then I went to high school. So I had to lie and say, I was like in the ninth grade at this high school just so I could have <laughs> my own Facebook. Um, what was it, what was and, and I purposely <laughs> never deleted, um, the very, the very first conversations that I had with my buddies. Like on Facebook oh Messenger God, when they man. first got it. LOL. And it you're was so <laughs> you're you're such a loser. LOL. Well, I wasn't mean like that, Ryan. Uh, like <laughs> you and your friends. I are think doing, you're a bully, man. No, I think you treated people um, like you treat me up in this this like, dungeon. <laughs> ball busting. <laughs> We're ball busting on Facebook Messenger. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even. It was literally like private message is what it was called. It wasn't like Messenger or anything like that. Um, but. I'm going to have to go back and and, f- and find that conversation because, you know, it's just like, 
So did you uh, do your social studies homework today? <laughs> yeah, man. Then the last like three questions really hung me up. Hey, man, you're going to be on MSN tonight? Oh, no, AOL, man. You were AOL back in the day? <sighs> yeah. What was first? Well, AOL was, was first. was simultaneous? AOL was first. Yeah, and I then wasn't it, it was like guy. I was in the overlap of AOL and MSN. Um, but like my older brother was only AOL, you know. Sure. Um, but yeah, it was wild times. You literally just had to you literally all of the uh acronyms. What was the one that was like my mom's watching? Like uh Oh man. God, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> you sent that to your buddy. Something and over shoulder. Like, it was like yeah. S- like SOS. It was like or POS, parent over shoulder. Yes. Like some that's, stupid. I think that's like what that. it was, man. Um yeah, Wild was, times. <laughs> and and now we just sit on we just literally do the same thing, but we just carry it around in our pocket all day. Yeah. Which is absolutely oh, wild. Man. Did you you saw the like the the ten year challenges on social media? Did you just like just get curious and go look back at like one of your first Facebook photos or like your 10 I, I mean, challenge. I've done it in the past. I haven't recently um, because I'm oh. trying to put on You Bet You Palooza, Ryan. I don't want to just have free time <laughs> all day like you do. Some people actually have to work. I did the 10-year challenge. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was I, I saw it. In a, in a funny way. Yeah, yeah. Like bad, like, oh my God, Ryan. <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty great. Um, if Okay, if you're listening to this, you need to stop. You need to go to YouTube and you need to search AOL Instant Messenger and MSN Messenger sounds. The the sounds of the door opening and closing when people are in the chat and really? out of the chat. Um, the MSN noises, like the dinging noises when you get a message. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. You got to go listen to it. It is like nostalgic. The, nostal- the nostalgia just like your whole body feels it. It's weird, but. It's um, interesting. Yeah. So go do that. We're going to do that after this podcast, Ryan. This You Betcha Radio podcast was brought to you by our friends at the Bev Buckle. Bev Buckle is a belt buckle that is the world's first retractable drink holder. And you can find them at BevBuckle.com. That's B-E-V-B-U-C-K-L-E.com. And you can get 15% off of your order by using promo code You Betcha with no space. Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A at bevbuckle.com using promo code you betcha for 15% off. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in to episode four of the You Betcha Radio podcast. Remember, you can find us on all social media platforms at the handle at O U Betcha. That's at O H H U Betcha. I got to go print some more t shirts. Yeah, Ryan, no, like go right now. You got to get these done. I'm out of here. See you, Ryan. See you guys in guys. episode five. Go get your tickets for You Betcha Palooza Cornhole Tournament. 50 bucks a team can win 500 bucks. Um, quite the return on investment. So, all I got to say is, I am Miles, the You Betcha guy. May your ranch always be runny and your bush light forever be cold. Cheers. Oh my God, that's cool. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah.